Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, the 2025 Battle Code kickoff um, here at MIT. Um, yeah, we started at 7.05 because, again, it's MIT time, so um, all of our lectures will be starting at uh, five minutes after 7 p.m. Um, so let's just get started with revealing this year's game. Hope you all are very excited to compete this month. Okay. So yeah, again, welcome to Battle Code 2025, where MIT's largest and uh, premier AI programming competition, where teams of one to four compete using Java. Um, this year we're using Java 21, not Java 8, which hopefully you guys are happy about. And we're also introducing a new experimental Python division um, for MIT students to compete in. If you're here, you probably know that this is a six unit IAP class. Um, but even if you're not registered for the class at MIT, uh, we'd like you to register on the play.battlecode.org uh, website because that's where you'll be submitting your code and seeing how your bot runs against um, other opponent's bots. So yeah, if you haven't done that yet, go to play.battlecode.org and um, just sign up and join a team if you're on a team. Okay, before we move on, we'd like to give a special thanks to all of our sponsors who helped fund our servers and tournaments this year. And additionally, we'd also like to acknowledge all of our devs this year that have been working on the game, um, affectionately Miss uh, Self to devs. Um, our engine uh, client and web Ember team have all been working very hard um, to prepare this game and make this whole game possible for you guys this year. Okay, let's move on to some class logistics. So we'll be holding lectures um, every weekday for the first two weeks of January. Um, so that's beginning today at 7 p.m. Eastern time in this room, 32.155. Um, and there'll be a live stream on YouTube as well, which some of you may be watching. Um, the lectures will last on average about an hour from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then after that, we'll be hosting two hour office hours inside this room um, after each lecture. So feel free to come in here if you need help with your code or um, writing your bot. And again, these lectures will be for just the first two weeks of IEP. Uh, again, this is a six unit IEP class for MIT students and it's uh, pass fail. So there are two ways to pass this class for credit. Either you can create a bot that can be a reference player, which will release um, as well as the code for for in week three. And if you don't wanna do that, the other way to pass this class is to basically write a two page report explaining um, how your team uh, coded your bot, what strategy you used. Um, and yeah, so those are the two ways to pass the class. Now let's move on to the tournament logistics. So we have first two, um, our first two sprint tournaments will be on Tuesday. So that'll be January 14th and January 21st, respectively. Um, and after that, we'll have the international qualifiers on January 25th and the US qualifiers on January 27th. Um, if you're an MIT student and this is your first time competing in Battle Code, you're also eligible to, fall, uh, to compete in the novice qualifiers, which happen on January 29th. And if you're a high schooler, which none of you guys in this room are, but if you're a high schooler, you're also eligible to compete in a special high school division on January 29th. Um, you're not required to participate in any of these tournaments, but we really recommend that you compete in all of the ones that you're eligible for, um, just because uh, there's really no loss in competing and we have prizes for each of these tournaments. Um, the eligibility is open for the sprint one and sprint two, so anyone who's able to compete for those. Um, for international qualifiers, we take um, teams consistent consisting entirely of international college students and um, for US qualifiers to take teams that consist entirely of US college students. Um, and on February 1st, we're gonna be hosting the final tournament in Cresby Auditorium here at MIT. So if you're in one of the top 16 teams, we'll fly you out to MIT um, and uh, you get to meet the other teams. We have a fancy dinner the night before and you get to talk to all the sponsors. It's really a lot of fun. So yeah, that's something to look forward to. And there will be lots of prizes, of course. So yes, the final uh, the final dinner and the final tournament will be on Friday and Saturday um, at the very end of IEP or January. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so the way that you basically submit bots for tournaments is you basically submit your code to the website by a certain deadline and we just take the code that you submitted and run it against other people's bots. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on to some practice materials because you guys might be wondering, like, how do you see how your bot kind of ranks against other people's bots? So one way that you can do this is by using the official reference player, which again will release week three of the competition. Um, 
this is also the bond that you guys have to be in order to pass this um, IEP class. Um, another way that you should really take advantage of is by uh, using the scrimmages feature that we offer. So scrimmages are just friendly um, matches between teams. Um, they let you see your robot kind of play out in action against other teams, and you can kind of evaluate how your strategy is stacking up against other people's. Um, we also offer ranked scrimmages. So in those, you'll be able to stick some ELO points on the outcome of the match. And basically, um, the scrimmages help you uh, determine an internal ELO, which we then use to seed the tournaments in the later, um, like the US qualifiers and international qualifiers. Um, so after you submit your bot for a scrimmage, your engine should run the game and outplay a replay file. And um, you're able to download replay files from online and then use like your client to visualize these. Um, so basically you can see what's going on during each of your games. And that should also be a helpful for, way for you guys to kind of practice and like see what's going on with your bot. Okay, so now we'll move on to the actual reveal of the game. So drum roll, please. Okay, Battle Code 2025 theme will be chromatic conflicts. Sure, you guys have seen the bunnies already, but now we're going to tell you a little bit more about what they're doing and why they're in conflict. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'll pass it on to Leo now. Um, hi everyone. So I'm Leo. I'm one of the tech of the I'm one of the T devs, and I'm going to guide you through what the game is going to look like this year. Um, the game is Chromatic Conflict, and here's a sample you can see there of what the characters in the game look like. Um, so here's a brief overview of the story behind the narrative behind the game. The bread and food of yore has begun to run out, forcing robot society to adapt. Gone are the jovial dogs, replaced by steampunk robot bunnies who have, co who have converted their need for nutrients into a reliance on paint. These bunnies have become territorial, forming clans and defense formations to protect the resources that keep, keeps them running. For the past two centuries, these bunnies have stayed within their own territory, but clans have begun, clans have begun to degrade the environment and start branching out. With these clans, will these clans be able to expand their territory and generate enough pain to protect their families? Or will they stray too close to other clans and be wiped out in conflict? This is the big deal of the game. Um, the objective of the game basically is to paint more than 70% of the paintable squares on the map. And you use towers to generate paint, money, or to defend your land. Paint specific patterns to do extra stuff you basically can paint specific patterns around certain areas in order to be able to do more stuff. Um, so here's a sample of what the map will look like. You will get very familiar with this figure because it will come back a lot as you go through the battle code this year. Um, we first have ruins, which are immovable and non-destructible, and they're used for building towers. Towers, like I said before, are used in turn to generate money, to generate paint, which are going to be very useful for you if you want to win the game. And then we have towers. Like I said, it's built on top of ruins. And we have also walls, which are impassable and you cannot paint on them. We also have paint, and each team has two paints, one primary and one secondary paint. The resources, the main resources you're going to use as you go through the game is paint and chips, which is basically money, cash. Um, more details on towers. Again, repeating, towers can only be built on ruins. That's very important because it's not going to work anywhere else. You can spawn bots and hold 1,000 paints match maximum in each tower, and you start with 500 paints in each tower. Um, can, you can attack other bots with a single attack or an area of effect attack. A single attack is basically one restricted range, one restricted block, and then an area of effect is a much larger area. Um, so here is what the icons for the towers look like. This one is for the one to the extreme left is for the money, generate the chips or the money. To the middle is the paint to generate paint, and to the extreme right is for defense. 
Um, if you want to build, if you want to create something out of the towers, you have to use the function mark tower pattern. And once you use the function to try to build it on a ring, it has a very useful functionality where it will show you the part, it will show you where you can paint using the numbers like one, two around it. And using those numbers, it basically guides you on how to paint in order to construct whatever you want to construct. And then complete tower pattern is the function you call once you are done painting around, once you're done painting on the ring, around the ring. So yeah, that looks like it. So money and paint massively mine resources. In order to be able to generate all of that, you have to mine the resources. And so money and paint towers yearn for the mines. Paint stored in the tower. Paint stored in the tower, chips. Paints are stored in the tower and chips are available to all allied units. You also have something called special resource pattern, which is a five by five pattern. And for each instance of the pattern that you create on the map, you'll be able to mine at a rate multiplied by three, which is really useful. Um, you start using the pattern using a function called mark resource pattern, and you stop the pattern using complete resource pattern. And then you also have, um, again, towers can spawn units for you. And if you have enough paint, a tower can spawn, it can spawn a, bo a bot with three blocks in the tower, three blocks of within the tower. Um, so we have two types of attacks. Again, we have single block attack and area of effect attack. And every turn, a tower can perform one of each. So you choose one. Um, so now we move to what the patooties will look like. No. Okay. Wow. Hello. Um, well, you've already seen them, but like we got the soldier bunny and the splasher bunny and the mopper bunny. Um, so these are your three types of robots that you can spawn and use however you want. Um, so the soldier bunny can paint empty tiles or deal 20 damage to enemy towers, not robots. Um, within a radius of square root 20. Um, and then the attack and cooldown are um, special to itself. Um, and then splasher bunnies basically target a center location and then like splash um, like all of the tiles in a circular area around that location. So it can deal damage to enemy towers, um, but it costs more to like produce it and um, to do an attack. And then mopper bunnies um, basically clean up your tiles for you. Um, so it can remove enemy paint on the tile. Um, and if an enemy robot is on the tile, they lose 10 paint and the mopper gains five paint. So it actually loves stealing. It can transfer paint from itself to allied robots or towers. Um, and it has a little mop sleep attack that can remove um, five paint from enemy robots in three adjacent tiles. So for example, um, you can see in the top left, um, if silver chooses to swing right, then it will remove five paint each from all three of the gold bunnies. Um, if it chooses in the bottom left, if it chooses down um, left or up, either way, it's only going to be like one bunny loses um, five paint, the rest are fine. And then um, if, they don't also have to be like in a line. Like if, for example, you had one in the corner over here and then in the corner over here and you swung um, right, um, both of them would lose five paint. Okay. Um, communication is key to a healthy relationship. Unfortunately, if your robots and towers are not connected by paint, they are not in a healthy relationship, so they can't communicate. Um, and what that means is that um, the robot needs to be able to access the tower through the paint. So like it has to have some pathway to the tower in which it only walks on like its own paint. 
Um, so, and you can send two kinds of um, communication. There are two forms of communication. Uh, one of them is messages, and they go from robot to tower or tower to robot. Um, and you have to be within range of each other. Um, you can send more information that way, but it's also like there's a byte limit. Um, the second way is markers, and you can communicate like robot robot communication that way. But it literally all it does is just like um, you should paint this color on this block, but it stays there. So, so hopefully that gave you guys a basic idea of what the game looks like for this year. Uh, like if you have more questions, um, we strongly recommend you to take a look at the game specs, which are now released on play.battlecode.org. Um, they have basically descriptions of everything we just discussed earlier, but in more depth, and they also have more detailed diagrams of all the units in their action, because we know some of that was probably a little bit confusing when you looked at it for the first time. Um, yeah, um, in addition, we just want to make some more comments about the Python, uh, the experimental Python division. So basically we've introduced a new Python engine for this year because that's something that's been highly requested in previous years. Um, the way that it's gonna work is that all competitors, um, even not MIT will be able to submit bots in Python, um, but only MIT students will be able to um, submit Python bots for tournaments. Um, that's just because the Python is still in an experimental stage. We're still trying to work out a few bugs. But other than that, um, if you'd like to submit a Python bot, please go ahead. We'd really like to see Oh, yes. Unfortunately, Java and Python bots cannot like, cross play against each other. Uh, maybe that's something we'll think about uh, implementing in the future, but for now, Python is still in an experimental stage. But we hope you guys enjoy the, the new option of Python. Um, like, also, if you guys haven't joined a team yet, um, we're going to open the room up to team finding now, and you're also free to join our Discord. Um, at this link shown here. Um, we have a team finding channel and we also have a few uh, voice channels if you guys want to join and talk to other people uh, to find your team. Again, you can be in teams of up to um, four for this competition. And thank you guys. Um, please let us know if you have any questions. Um, we're always active on Discord. And yeah, hope you enjoy reading the steps and uh, we'll be back here tomorrow at the same time to discuss um, intro to Java and also just like basics of how to get set up for this. So. <laughs>